Hey everyone, Sam here. In this video, I want to show you how to recreate this animation from Noble from scratch inside of After Effects. It's nice and simple. It's the sort of animation I like, and we're gonna do it from scratch. So let's get started and open up After Effects. So I'm gonna create a comp. I like to create my lot animations with a width and height of 500 pixels and they just have a 10 second duration even though this won't last 10 seconds. I'm going to create a solid background, just keep it white and lock it in. And I think with this animation we can obviously create one pre-comp with this square and the circle animating and then just duplicate it two more times and offset their timings to get this look. So let's start off with, actually I'm going to duplicate this and just call it square and squares will hold the square pre-comp. So inside of square Let's create the square. So we're gonna grab a rectangle, hold shift so that it does scale it uniformly. Um, let's add some stroke. It's quite a thin stroke. So maybe something like that. I'm just gonna align the anchor point to the center and position it in the center. So how does that line up in the pre-comp? That should be right, something like that. And then we would have three of them. One. Let's remove the background. There we go. Add another one. There we go, and just align them. Okay, that's about right. So let's crack on with our square. So we're going to give it a white fill. We've got a 12 pixel stroke and we're going to start off by doing this path animation where the corners sort of flip over and then we can move on to the circle. So to accomplish this, we're going to convert the rectangle, going to right click it, sorry, right click the rectangle path and convert to a Bezier path. And then I'm going to animate the path, so I'm going to keyframe it. And then we can get started. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and call the second one template. Call the first one square. And just lock the template because we need this as a sort of guide layer. And perhaps we could just you know, I'm going to keep the opacity to 100. So to start off, we're going to go to about frame 15, grab the path, bring this one up here and this one down here and just align it with the corners. Okay, so there we go, it's flipping over. And I am actually don't need the fill, so I'm gonna re remove the fill from both of our rectangles. There we go, that's better. So did I align them properly? I think I did a pretty good job. If I hold on to shift, that seems to help a bit. Yeah. 
and you can see here this sort of we're getting like spiky well the edges just yeah a bit too spiky so i think in this one it actually has rounded corners so we're going to do that we're going to just go into the stroke and set the line join to round so there we go if i remove the template okay might go to just 25 go a bit slower and then we're gonna wait for a bit and then do the other corner so let's show the template again Lock it in, grab the path, and yeah, let's flip over these corners. So I did 20 frames, 25, and then we wait. So one, two, three, four, five. to grab this point and the top left Let's bring this down okay that looks pretty good okay Some easy ease, just select them all, F9. Okay. How's that looking? Is it okay? Was it so they both swap at the same time and then left yeah so we are recreating it correctly it's not identical see if you go to the last frame and then jump to the first one you can see it moves around a bit um, so I guess if you make the template appear and Maybe I should change its um, stroke color. That'd be easier. To a red. And then we can better see how to move our path. There we go. And then it's got a little bit of black there. That's pretty much identical. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to be too visible, the difference. So. Gonna keep it at that. And so now we need to add our circle. So the circle just stays in the center and just changes the color. And actually animating a color isn't something I've done very much of. It's it's pretty simple to do it, but um, it's just not a, a thing I've been using much in my glossy animations. So we're gonna create uh, an ellipse and center it to the composition. Let's, I'm gonna remove its stroke because I don't really need one and give it a black feel. And just center the anchor point again. Okay. And so, pretty much just, just chills. While star, squares just flipping over um, I'm gonna convert this to a busy path as well and then we can keyframe the color and so it sort of changes 
just after our square passes over it. So about here. So there, yeah, set the keyframe. Um, and then one, two, starts at about frame 20. And gets quite light. And does it for about 10 frames. So, 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 let's see. Color, and then let's do D3, D3, D3. Is that gray enough? That's pretty similar. If you want to get really precise, you can open up the dev tools with F12 in Chrome and then just cheekily grab any color from here. In that case, it was D8. There we go. A little trick. Just paste that in so we've got the exact color now. And add some smoothing. I think it needs to start a bit earlier. And maybe we can, yeah, maybe we can sort of do a ramping up of it. Go into here and then sort of just make it quicker towards the end. That's about that's a bit more in time with what the square's doing. Yeah. Okay. So and then what happens? And then does it go back? Yeah, it goes back. So we're gonna grab these keyframes, go here, paste them in, just right click, time reverse, and then yeah. Make them start off a bit later and then it goes back to black so it should loop seamlessly. There we go. So, how many frames? That's five frames after. So, if we do 20, it's looking good. Looking very good. So, let's remove the template. Oops, let's remove the template. And something I thought of is to put a little bit of a twist on it. You could perhaps um, duplicate the square layer and give it a fill. And then actually mask the circle and so like that it um, would like not overlap the square if that was something you were looking for so that sort of gives it another look as well which can be interesting um, if you want to switch it up so once you've done that you can head back into your main pre-comp and We've recreated it pretty well. So, let's cut it there. Actually, we want it to be a bit longer because we're gonna offset them, aren't we? So, let's go to four. And let's just select all of them. And let's do enable time loop for remapping. And so this animation stops at 210. So at 210, let's keyframe, remove these ones, and yeah, let's offset them a bit. So let's try, let's try, let's try 10 
frames. And so go up to 20. Let's see how that looks. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's pretty nice. I quite like that. So yeah, it's a nice little animation. Important thing to do is to check it works as a lot animation. And so the quick way to do that is just hop onto the Lotifaz plugin and go into your pre-comp, render it, and that's rendering fine. And I think we've done a pretty good remake of it. So there we have it. We've successfully recreated this animation by Noble. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Make Lotties. If you did, be sure to subscribe for more how-tos and tutorials on making lot animations in the future. And you can check out my social media accounts down below. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you very soon for the next one. Bye-bye. I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the SV Genius YouTube channel to keep up to date with everything happening in the wonderful world of Lottie Animations.